Hello and welcome back to Chari. Today I'm going to be talking about Severance by Ling Ma. Uh, this came out in 2018 and it follows an orphaned character called Candice Chen. Uh, she works as a production coordinator for Bibles um, at a print house which does all of their production in Asia. So she has been living and working in New York for five years um, when this mysterious new fungal infection called Shen fever originates in China and spreads across the globe. If you catch Shen fever, um, you will slowly break down and become sort of a zombie. You end up in this drone-like state um, and it's eventually fatal. We have several timelines in this book. Uh, we follow Candace when she first moves to New York and how she meets her boyfriend and gets a job. Um, we also see her as the fever is spreading and she is contractually obliged to stay in New York and work in their New York office um, as the whole city empties out. Um, and we also see her after she's escaped New York and joined a band of survivors on their way to Chicago for some sort of refuge space. The band of survivors is headed by a guy called Bob and it's a quasi-religious cult basically <laughs> with very strict rules and a charismatic leader that doesn't quite jive with Candace. So I added this to my wish list in July 2020. Um, I guess I saw it recommended. I feel like I saw it recommended and I was like, that sounds like a great book. I really want to read it. Uh, put up my Christmas list, received a copy. I even wanted to read it even though they didn't have any the normal UK book dimensions. <laughs> um, and I totally forgot what it was about and I didn't even realise what it was about until I started reading it, which was very exciting. It is really interesting to compare what happens in this book to, you know, the world now. There were some bits that were like a bit too real. <laughs> um, let me just read out this a little bit. Behind me, Lane and Blythe donned their respirator masks, making jokes about epidemic fashion, whatever that meant. They were giggling hysterically. And there's this whole um, like era where it just was, it was like this, this kind of secreted thing that came out of China that you don't really know a lot about. And everyone was like, yeah, I guess this is going to like completely change our lives. We should wear N95. Eerily similar to what the vibe was like around a year ago. Um, but there's a distinct lack of like panic in this book. The fever is played down, uh, by all the governments to, to stop people from worrying and it sort of slowly creeps in and everything grinds to a halt and there's no like coordinated international response there's no strong messaging about what um prevents the spread or what to be worried about or border controls or corporate advice and all those things make me so thankful for the international response to coronavirus like sure it's not perfect vaccine nationalism like it managed to escape in the first place covid deniers mass skeptics etc but the fact that we had our greatest scientific minds on it immediately really well funded and took it seriously um it is so much better than it could have been and in this book you're only getting one person's perspective maybe there was a huge frenzy going on in the background and she just didn't really participate in it but it is so stark how little of a top-down response there is in this book i mean it's not trying to be a book about the geopolitics of the virus it's a it's a story about one person's um travel through in it and and connection to, to people and place but it did make me realize that all of this could have played out way worse <laughs> the parts of this book that affected me the most um were when new york was emptying out so she was basically offered by her company do you want to be one of the select group of people that are going to keep coming to the office and if you come to the office every day for the next six weeks or something like that you'll receive this enormous financial payout at that point but only if you stay until then and candace goes for it um her boyfriend's broken up with her and and run away um she has like other financial worries that she needs to take care of um so she decides to stick with it but she sticks with it in the face of absolute carnage around her there's a point where even her superiors won't answer their emails or their phones and it's presumed that's because they've got shen fever and the way the subway breaks down after a huge flood so the mta run uh, buses into manhattan and she gets on them and eventually when the buses stop running she takes a taxi and she's walking down these streets with no open shops um and she's still like gotta go to work and it's actually absurdist it's so it's so like the this is fine fire meme um but to her she's like well life is just happening as normal i'm doing the normal things um and it really just made hit home how 
much I think I'm also in that mindset of like this is fine life is continuing on as normal I'm still with my boyfriend I still got my adorable puppy I'm in my flat the weather keeps happening work keeps happening um but the things that actually make life worth living for me are, are completely devoid from my life it just really struck me very starkly how much of like a simulacrum of normal life I'm playing right now I feel like at work people are always saying you know take it easy, like this is a whole new thing we're facing. And I've always been pretty soldier on. I'm like, life is, is fine. Um, but then you read something like this and you're like, could I be that drone that still goes, goes to work in a world that's crumbling around you? And I think I kind of could. And is that, is that a good thing? Is that, is that strength? Is it idiocy? Um, is it, is it lack of, of feeling and awareness for, reality you know? the trouble with that realization is what's your response to it because it's not like i mean in this book it's sort of implied that almost everyone gets the virus and dies but you can escape and go live off in the country and maybe be fine um but the thing about the coronavirus pandemic as we have it it really cuts off human connection no matter if you run away out of the city there's no way to fetch back the things that i really appreciate about ordinary life so maybe are you just like enlightened once you realize that life isn't what you what you want or is it actually fine to live in bliss reverence and um tr try and make yourself believe that this is the life you wanted to exist in this has gone to a very existential place and i apologize um but those are the kind of feelings you'll have once you read this book aside from the whole pandemic parallels thing uh, I thought it was a pretty good book. Um, I didn't ever really feel that attached to Candace. I think the bits with Bob and the traveling band of survivors, um, I, I don't know, I just, I'm not sure it went deep enough on um, the implications of that. And I don't like, I don't like like the religious ideology stuff in it. Um, I don't think it was played as fully as it could have been. Like it felt almost like a separate separate book her dealing with that stuff and, and the lead up to um to leaving new york that was an interesting little storyline but i don't know it just it didn't like jive with the rest of the book for me um but i did enjoy it um if you've read it please tell me what you thought about it in the comments below <laughs> i haven't read any pandemic fiction in this time um but i'm down for it like so if you have any other pandemic fiction recommendations love a good apocalypse um, I think one every now and then is enough to keep the sanity. <laughs> also, before I forget, I feel like I've seen a lot of reviews describing this as satire and I didn't think it was satirical. I would not describe it as satirical. It was very literal, her, her, her problems and her progress. Even if the conclusions of some of those things are slightly absurdist, I would not describe it as satire. And it makes me think like, people just use the word satire in reviews when there's something just sort of incongruous or incomparable. Um, because I don't, I just didn't think this was satire. Do you? Did you? I don't know. So this has been a review of Severance by Elaine Ma. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye.